It's funny people say, oh, he's in a good mood today. When am I ever in a really bad mood? No, I don't. I think you don't like that. You, really, you know, you really kind of. Yeah, I'm really it's enjoying not, myself. You're not, not seeing me. I'm going to have it. I mean, I've got, and I've got two days off next week. I've got Monday, Tuesday off. So I'm going to be able to really reflect back on what a fantastic week I had. Okay, so we'd like to welcome you aboard the Stavely Express. If I can introduce my uh, crew members, I've got Jeanette, Linda, and Sean who are two work coaches and the UC SPS at Stavely. First of all, I'd like to say a big thank you to them for doing this because they are volunteers, but completely, completely out of their comfort zone because the people that I would have thought would have stepped forward for were on leave this week. So a big thank you to them, first of all. So, so welcome on board the Stavely Express. Smooth running, high speed express train fueled by the kind of inspiration that's taking both colleagues and customers on a fast and exciting journey to future success. Our passengers will be getting on board in economy class, but along the journey they're going to be uh, calling in at various stations where they can get, get upgraded with a view to arriving at destination job as a first class passenger. We already have a really experienced, highly engaged crew on board who work efficiently as a close-knit team and are very proud of their train. This is evident from our superb survey results last year. We were one of the top five officers in the group. We had a 100% completion rate, 100% positive response to the key engagement areas and made improvements against every element of the survey. But we're not going to coast along with those results. In fact, if we're brutally honest, we were a tad disappointed with them because we were going for the 100% last year. So we were working really hard on getting the 100% this year. Our people engagement engineers are regularly checking the pressure gauges via mini surveys and trying to establish what stopped us from declaring that strong affiliation to the, to the responses rather than plumping for the agree. We're also focusing on the pay and benefits indicator to try and move that from the 72% up to the 90%. By examining each question carefully and having discussions to establish what we could do as a team to make a positive impact on that score. We've got some new crew members joining us, which is unusual for our office because we haven't had new, new members of staff other than Linda, but she's an experienced. So we're going to involve them in our fun activities and monthly themes like our sports day where we were playing golf or Valentine's puddle where everything was red. And we need to make sure that they're aware of our reward and, re reward and recognition awards. So our, our golden mouse for digital improvements and our good egg award to ensure that they feel part of the team and are on board the train with us at the earliest opportunity. Not only were we the top five in the survey results, but we have been in top ten, the top ten group offices for attendance management for several months and are currently sitting comfortably in the top 20. This is under three pink letters from Sandra and we aim to get back into the top ten and remain there for the rest of the next year. We'd also like to be top ten in performance, but we're somewhere off that at the moment. We have been to look at other high-performing trains such as Tamworth and Litchfield and spoken to others like Wellington to, and, uh, to try and see what they're doing differently, see how we can improve and what we can steal from them. We've established it's definitely not a problem with the crew. In fact, I would go as far as saying that our team work harder than, than their team to achieve every result that we get. Our leaves on our railway line are the poor labour market and travel issues for customers in our outlying villages. So we're putting plans in place to try and overcome this and won't allow, us to, won't allow it to slow us down or derail us. We're working with Wheels to Work to overcome some of the travel barriers and we have a clear employer engagement plan. To support performance, our aim is for all our passengers to get a first class service from all our crew members. To ensure consistency, we already have one hour a week as work coach development time used for case conferencing, discussing nudges, sharing ideas and conducting action learning sets around specific areas 
so everyone is at the same level of knowledge and understanding. And the action learning sets are led by our coaches depending on their area of expertise. We want to make much more use of the findings from quality checks to make sure we have the basics right the first time every time. All crew will have clear objectives, stretching individual numerical targets, supported by robust one-to-ones to maintain individual accountability and ownership of the goals. And to maintain the culture of continual improvement, there's a minimum expectation that there will be a new area for development on individuals' PDPs every month. And I'd like to hand over to my crew so they can tell you about our passengers' life-changing journeys. Okay, so the journey so far for the passenger. Their claim to the benefit is their ticket to board the stay here is first. The train is in the station awaiting the passengers to embark. Um, the aim is to get the customers travelling in first class as soon as possible and to be on the journey for no longer than a maximum of four weeks. As we see them ahead, we will lose some passengers along the way as they reach their destination, which of course is a job. What does a customer journey look like for stay here passengers and how will we do this? So following on from the initial work search interview, where the work coach has set quality and stretching goals, which includes a completion of the modules, the customer will attend daily interventions for intense job searching. From week two to week three, the customer will attend daily group action sessions, and at week four to week eight, the customer will attend um, interventions, which will include CV check-in, job matching, and mock interviews. We will also discuss work experience, college work, apprenticeships and traineeships, which will include links to the apprenticeship journey. Make any referrals to relevant provisions and continue upskilling requirements. From week 8 to week 13, all customers will continue to attend the Job Centre for daily interventions and job matching. At week 13, the 18 to 24 year olds will be referred to the Ambitions Programme for extra job searching, support, improving skills and educational qualifications. And at the nine month stage, they will refer to the work programme. For the future, the harder to help 39 week plus customers will be looking at delivering more intense group action sessions to shunt these customers forward. For ESA customers, there's a disabled persons rail card which they can purchase to board the train. These customers will receive ongoing support for their work coaches through the ESA journey. We will offer early engagement interventions prior to the work capability assessment outcome decisions and to all ESA support group cohort customers. We will then explain the customer journey and offer work coach support. All fit notes handed into the job centre, we will offer an immediate appointment so that a customer can collect a ticket to jump aboard. We will make a telephone call when booking and join a work focus interviews to introduce ourselves and to explain the job centre plus offer and we'll make referrals to group action sessions at the new Journey Work Focus interview to advise them on what the Job Centre can offer in the way of support. We will, coast, we will case load customers from day one, book voluntary appointments and mandate interventions for all cohort customers. For the lone parents, they are able to purchase a family rail card. They will receive ongoing support from their work coach throughout the infant support journey and we'll be working with and seeing all cohort customers on a monthly basis to influence the offload. We'll be looking at making a referral to any suitable provisions for both the ESA and IS customers later on. During the journey, the conductor will be checking all tickets, making sure the customer adheres to all the correct rules and regulations and the compliance referrals made appropriately. So moving on then, our goal is to complete the journey as quickly as possible. And so our main focus is on the 0 to 8 week journey. As previously stated, all customers attend the daily interventions either on a one-to-one -one basis or in a group action session. Our daily intervention has been 45% for several months and our aspiration is to achieve 50% interventions for 2016-2017. Um, we do have uh, the daily interventions. When we made the new claim, for the rest of that week, they will be attending work coach interviews. So if they attend the new um, work search interview on a Monday, then on the Tuesday they're booked in with the work coach, we'll be checking the CV. If they have a good CV, fine, we don't need to do anything further, but if the CV is not up to scratch, not suitable, then we will book them on a one-to-one -one basis with futures to get a good CV. Then we'll be asking them to complete um, modules one and two online and match to vacancies. 
and on the Wednesday we'll be walking them back in, um, checking the UJ account and uploading the CVs, ensuring the email address is appropriate and to complete modules three and four, and again, matching. And on Thursday, um, complete the final five and six online modules and job matching. And on Friday, we're booking onto the next group information, uh, group action sessions and job matching. And that takes them through the whole of that week then. So that moves them on to week two to week three, where they'll be attending daily um, group action sessions. And in these sessions, we'll be covering things like instruction and expenses, CV building with examples, covering letters and why we need them, how to complete application forms, effective job search in the digital market, and other ways of job searching, hidden jobs and social media. We're looking at interviewing skills and the different types of interviews and confidence building. We will also promote work experience and self-marketing of work experience, volunteering, self-employment and apparels. At the end of the, the sessions, the customer will be asked to complete an evaluation sheet so that they can provide feedback so we can improve on the contents of the sessions. With all this information on board, the customer hopefully will steam ahead. We would inspire to get on board more local employers. And I hear you say, what's our triage then? Well, we have selection days and tasting days with employers on an office site, which enables us to book customers an immediate appointment with an employer. When we don't have an employer on site, we have a tool, an agency toolkit that helps us identify which agencies is most likely to serve the type of customers, the, the work the customer is looking for. We will contact the agency on behalf of the customer and book an appointment while the customer is in the office. And where the customer lacks some basic skills, we will then refer them onto agencies and providers for upskilling. And our dream is to take the ABC campaign one step further and for that customer to get that dream job. Now that Isla and I as clients have boarded, we will now look at the start of their journey and encourage them to see the benefits of upgrading to first class. As Linda has mentioned earlier, early engagement is the key and we will now be conducting face-to-face -face interventions as opposed to over the phone. However, we will still give them a ring before the intervention just to introduce ourselves and to put them at ease. This will also cut down on the fail to attend rates and it will also give them a chance to ask any questions. Once the income support or ESA claim has been taken and they have attended their first intervention, they are caseloaded from day one. And they will remain caseloaded while ever they're in the cohort. We ensure that while they're in the cohort, they are seen on a monthly basis and always have an outstanding intervention. We also issue a stately job centre newsletter at the first intervention, which gives them some really useful information to help their upgrade on the journey. And I've got a couple of copies there for you to look after. Okay. The action plan is also completed at each intervention to help follow up and also that claimants who are under the mandatory work related activity are set stretching and quality activities suitable to them. We are averaging 30 interventions per week on ESA and once we get our additional crew member we will be increasing this to 40 per week. Our income support interventions are currently averaging 8 per week which we intend to double and we put particular focus on the income support claimants whose child is four and over so that, they, so that they offload into a job before they claim another benefit. Our federal focus is on the cohort claimants and is working two to three months in advance to try and avoid them actually getting to the critical cohort stage. She does her housekeeping and ensures that all our cohort claimants are booked into work coaches' diaries. We also have the income support and ESA trackers that are checked on a daily basis. We have strong links with compliance and visits and we have weak presence in the office which is really, really good because we can approach them direct for advice and referrals each day. The feedback shows that our office has a very high referral rate. Okay. We have one ESA and one income support group action session per week and we deliver these on a daily basis. We continue to have success from these se sessions. And for example, one young parent attended or a chance for a few hours working at a pub. But as she had only just made a new claim, she was not aware of all the benefits and the benefits of working. She was set homework, which was to do her own benefit calculation and entitled to. She attended the next day, pleasantly surprised at how much she would be better off on 16 hours. We contacted the employer on her behalf to see if they could offer her 16 hours, which they agreed. A week later, she was fast-tracked to her destination and to her job. We also work with the Employment Support Lounge support group claimants as well, and we invite them into the group action sessions. 
Again, we've had success with one lady who had a terminal brain tumour, who despite being in the support group, wanted help to live life to the full, and we supported her with a couple of training courses. We also get providers and employees to join us on the group action sessions, to give support on various groups that's available to them. The local authority, Derbyshire County Council, Disability Projects, attends with us on the ESA ones, but also support with volunteering and they support with paid applications, which again can help them along their journey. We always try and give them the confidence and belief that they can do it and strongly encourage work experience case studies and if suitable we'll move them on to a two week placement with us. We also encourage voluntary work to this group of claimants and continue to have great success with internal and external works. We make every contact count and an example of this would be when claimants stand in sick notes, if there is an available work coach they will be seen there and then for an immediate interview. And now we'll move on to our next station. Um, welcome to the employer carriage. Sitting here then we've got six of the top 12 Central England group employers. At the moment we're actively engaged with three of these and uh, one offers ongoing work experience, the other two work with us for recruitment campaigns and take up the use of sex based work academies and our employer advisor is in the process of making contact with three others. We have an area of the carriage reserved for the employers we do the most business with. These are mainly small, independent employers that use the Stavely Express for all their recruitment needs. This includes, again, sector-based work academies, which were run for McDonald's, uh, KFC, and a new employer that came to the area um, last year called Eden Futures. <coughs> Due to the size of our uh, majority of our employers, they are unable to commit to a daily uh, attendance in the job centre. However, what they do provide for us are selection days. So they will book a day in advance where we can book on any uh, claimants that are required to attend. Once they've uh, been to the uh, selection day, they then progress onto a taster day for work experience. This then, um, once they've been to a taster day, they then can commit to a four week work experience placement so it's not wasting that employer's precious time. From this station we also have connecting lines to other job centres. Where we can tap into the opportunities that they are available to us. The work experience, the sector based work academies and the recruitment open days and job fairs. We get a weekly timetable of events uh, from Sheffield, Worksop, Woodhouse and Chesterfield. <laughs> Standing in the aisle of our carriage are our agencies, mainly based in the Chesterfield and Sheffield areas. From uh, a locally produced agency tracking tool, we are able to identify which employer uses which agency, which is really useful when it comes to doing the triage of our work. Even though this carriage is working fine, the crew of the Stavely Express are aware that we need to uh, improve this for the next. So, our future plans. Right, our future plans is for the Stavely employer engineer to go out and map all our local employers and make contact with them. Giving them an information pack on what work experience we can provide, um, training facilities, um, interviewing, and also the uh, most important one, Universal Job Match Service. <laughs> we hope, in turn, this will increase the number of employers at the moment from three per week to one per day in the office. We also hope um, this will maintain our sec number of sector-based work academies, if not increase these. And last year we had three, and we're hoping to increase that to at least four or five. We also want to make sure we are the first point of contact when that employer needs to recruit. The Stavely Express also plans to upgrade its crew and for each member of the crew to be a sector lead. So they will basically go out with the employer advisor, site visits, work experience sign ups, and they will create and maintain a caseload of customers. Um, 
that will then be ready for when an employer recruits, they, they'll come in and uh, we'll have people ready for them. The sector leads will also deliver presentations to staff. Um, that will be based on that employer's requirements, what training or what certificates that person needs to be able to work for that company, and um, it will also give an overview of each employer and the area that provides service in care, retail, rent. We also plan to have a better triage with employers and providers that are based in other job centres. Even though at the moment we are in contact with them, we feel we are missing out on quite a lot. Um, so, we've got to ensure that that timetable of events that are happening in Chesterfield, Sheffield, Works Off and Woodhouse, we do need to make sure we keep that up to date. We also plan on starting to run themed sector weeks. We've recently run a, an apprenticeship week and from feedback from that, we decided that um, running a sector themed week where we'd have employers, providers um, coming in on a daily basis to talk about what they've got available. That will be uh, run by the Stabler crew member that is that sector week. Um, we also need to ensure all work coaches have attended workshops to familiarise themselves with NEST, the knowledge hub, campaign in a box, and be aware of the access to work that we can provide. By putting these measures in place, we feel that um, the Stay with the Express will be on board and ready for our journey um, into 2020. Back to my slide, Back to you. All right. As the journey continues, a few passengers will have already disembarked and already got to their destination. The ones that still continue with their journey, that have never worked or have not worked for a long time, will have an expectation to go into a work experience placement, which will give them more skills and a job reference, which will give more options available for different destinations to get off at. The work experience self-marketing pack is issued to claimants to encourage them to self-market placement. This includes universal credit claimants as well. And if an employer signs into an agreement, this could also lead to further work experience placement with that employer. In the future, opening more rooms. We also wish for a work experience employer pack to anyone who's doing voluntary work to give, to give to their employer, which could result in more destinations available if they sign into an agreement with us. We hold group action sessions for selection days with employers in the office, and during these sessions, we promote taster days and work experience placement to support them with their journey. The office works very close together, especially with the EPA, and we all ensure that the tracker is kept up to date to capture the results. The EPA will email out to all the staff weekly opportunities to ensure that they are aware of all the available placements. We encourage all remaining passengers to do the internal wet taster days and to shadow a member of staff to initially gain their confidence, especially for our vulnerable claimants. We then look at moving them on to a further work experience placement to ensure that this is a quality placement that is going to help them on their journey to improve their skills and their confidence. Our latest success is with Dobby's Garden Centre, which following a taste today and then an eight week placement has resulted in five of our claimants securing employment and reaching their destinations well before their last stop. If they move on to our internal works experience placement, we agree flexible times and days to meet their needs and get them doing some of the following roles. We get them supporting the job clubs, creating displays, shadowing work coaches, general office, du office duties and accompanying the EPA to visit employers. We also get them to do a warm handover to the next new work experience person and train them so that they also have leadership and team building skills to add to their CV. If the claimant is confident enough, we'll also get them involved with the employer selection days, which has also resulted in work experience starts. An example of this was a JSA claimant who was very shy and no work history, completing the internal works for two weeks. She set in on the selection day with the employee at Ibis Hotel. She was then put forward for a four-week placement in a reception admin role with, which, with them, which resulted in her getting to her final destination, as they offered her a job, and ten months later she's still there, as I spoke to her the other day. Okay. We also ensure that a follow-up intervention is booked after the placement to look at further work experience placements, and we'll also make sure that they've updated the CV with details of that work experience placement. Now as the train moves into our arrival halls, the hope is that most passengers will have dis disembarked after moving into a first class and reaching their final destination into a job.
Okay, so as we pull into the final station, we want to make a number of pledges. As our train moves ever closer to the 2020 vision, the engineers and crew will constantly review and revi refine the train, taking ownership for the goals and making continuous improvements so we become a high-performance, high-moving H2 bullet train. <laughs> as the driver, I will regularly seek feedback on my leadership skills at monthly one-to-ones with the crew and use the 360-degree feedback using this as a basis for my own development and stretching PDP. I will share this with the team to lead by example, encourage them to take more ownership of their own development and demonstrate that I am listening and acting on their feedback. Recognising that I'm a reflector by nature, I will act promptly on the odd occasion I notice that I'm tolerating issues and set time-bound expectations for improvements. We will canvas all our passengers on a regular basis to ask them what we could have done to make their journey quicker and more efficient and use the results to upgrade future passengers' journeys. We'll fully embed UC and understand the management information as well as we understand the legacy benefit offload information now to ensure that we can have a positive impact on performance and customer lives. Um, Having a full crew this year, because we didn't for the whole of last year, we're confident that we can make improvements in every area of performance and have set ourselves the challenge of making a month-on-month -month improvement across all targets. And the final pledge is we'll no longer hide our light at the end of the tunnel. We're going to be loud and proud of achievement and we'll ne let you know Phil by text. So, <laughs> and then we've got our pledges that we can give you a copy of if you want to discuss them. Yeah, I've got more to put down for you. Okay. Fab. Thank Guys. You. Have a seat. Okay. Um, maybe some further away.